What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mid Hunter Comics and today we got some awesome stuff coming in and it would have been a normal just unboxing video of some cool books but one of these is a Silver Age key that I just got for too absurdly good of a price and we're not talking like a flea market find this was from eBay and we're going to talk about how it's even really possible to get such a high grade comic that happens to also be a key from that time for that much money. I'm going to give you a heads up right now. It's from June of 1963, and the grade was a CGC 9.2. Any Silver Age collector fans know that that is very impressive for 1963. We're going to do some comparing and contrasting with other keys from around the summer of 1963, just to show you the differences in these keys. Was it a fluke? How did this happen? But first things first, let's go ahead and do some unboxing. Go ahead and like and comment down below what is the best deal that you ever got specifically from eBay that it was such a good deal that it almost felt like a bit of a steal. I honestly don't know which package it is, so let's just start with this one. Oh, yes, guys, comic and pop culture fans, we have a very minty fresh dog treats. Okay, I'm a new dog daddy, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. Some of the unboxings might have stuff for dogs. Let's keep it moving. I think it might be this one, so let's take a look. Okay, no, this is the Batman 608 that I actually have to send to the winner of the CGC DC Custom Logo Contest. Everyone else has been sent their second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place. This is the first place, so I have to get that sent out. Let me look at that for a second, though. Yeah, that is that is nice. Nice new, uh, nice brand new slab, too. All right, let me put that back and get that shipped out. All right, so it's probably this next one, then. <laughs> no, this is not it, but... I might as well flex this on you guys. You remember that I had a Detective Comics 880? Well, look, I got it sent in to be signed by Jock. And he used a nice, uh, nice red ink for signature down there by the lips. That is gorgeous. Sorry. Give me a moment to check this out myself here. Whoo! Man, that, if that just isn't one of the most beautiful, more recent modern covers ever, I don't know what is. Well, thank you to CGC for actually getting a book back in semi-normal timing. Wow. All right, let's keep it going. I really want to find this Silver Age for you. I guess it's probably that one. Because I think this is the Swamp Thing keys, which don't worry, I will unbox for this video at the end. <laughs> Yeah, guys, this is it. Wow. All right, guys, it is a Silver Age early Green Lantern key. I, it even The guy gave me it in a nice Mylar uh, package. Guys, this is the first appearance of Dr. Polaris, which is a fairly recognizable, somewhat notable, I don't know if he's in the top three, but he's probably in the top ten Green Lantern villains. Dr. Polaris came out a few months before X-Men 1 came out, and Dr. Polaris has complete magnetic capabilities. He basically has the exact same capabilities as Magneto, and it was before X-Men number one. So even Marvel collectors like to collect this particular book. But for me, a Green Lantern collector, guys, 9.2, 1963, this is the highest grade I have for a 1963 book in my collection. Now, who wants to guess what I paid for this? It, it might shock you. Keep in mind, this grade is essentially almost impossible to still find. If we look at what CGC defines as a 9.2, it's a comic that might have some handling or some wear and some possible minor manufacturing errors. So for something that's basically hardly touched, that has to last this many decades from 1963, for it to still have a 9.2 is quite honestly shocking. It's incredibly impressive. 
Silver Age collectors, you're probably looking at this and drooling. So what have I told you that I got this for 250 bucks? For an early Green Lantern key, one of his notable villains, $250. There's also considerably lower grades of this on eBay that are priced significantly higher. This guy was, he had it for 350 bucks, and I was gonna just buy it right then and there because that's absurdly cheap, but then I saw he had a make an offer, and I don't know if it was a morbid curiosity of, to see what I could get away with. I threw 250 bucks out there. I was waiting for some back and forth, and the offer just got accepted, so I paid, and now it's here. And I, I, the first thing I'm gonna do is leave this guy the best review of my life. And then the second of all, I wanted to make a video because, guys, especially Silver Age collectors of you, you know how hard this is. Are you of the same opinion that I have, which is a 9.2 from 1963, even if it was a nothing comic? It was the most bland, let's say, I, I can't really think of a good example off the top of my head, but I don't know, some random Batman comic from 1963 that's not a key, I feel should be in already just the thousand dollar range. Throw in the fact that it's a key, and look, I know Green Lantern is not as big of a deal as what's going on in Marvel right now, but this is, this is a fluke. This is a crazy, almost disaster that this was given away for this low. What we are going to do, guys, we're going to look on eBay at some similar 1963 books, probably over with Marvel at the time, and do a little fun compare and contrast just to show the massive difference that Marvel has over frankly DC and certainly Green Lantern that's for sure. First of all we got Amazing Spider-Man number five. Now obviously we know that Amazing Spider-Man's probably going to be much bigger of a deal than Green Lantern but let's check out how much of a big deal it is. Yeah it's the first Doctor Doom appearance in the Spider-Man title so it's a big key 9.2 that's pretty fresh for freaking uh, 1963 guys. But look at this price tag it's at $27,000 uh, here we got Strange Tales Annual 2. Uh, that one's coming in at 16K. Uh, early Spider-Man appearance, first crossover. Pretty cool, you know. Cool enough to be $16,000. It's just, you know, we got the first appearance of Surtur. Um, First full appearance and first cameo. Actually, both right here. One's about eight grand, close to nine grand. The other's at around 11. Moving down, look, look at this. We got Josie number one. We got Avengers number two. Uh, that's Avengers number two in the 9.2 is very impressive. Still, though, guys, you know, already we're into the 8.5s here. Metal Men number one. Here's a random Detective Comics uh, 318. That's going for 1,230. That's not a key. That's just a regular Detective Comics in a 9.2 from 1963. Just goes to show you guys, most of these other books are all going for pretty much bare minimum $1,000 from 1963. How the hell was I able to get the first appearance of Dr. Polaris for 250? Crazy. All right guys, so I understand this is not an X-Men one or the first appearance of uh, Otto Octavius, but I think you'd have to agree, 250 bucks that is the wrong price for something like that. I've always said that Green Lantern books are underrated, but the fact that I just got the first appearance of Dr. Polaris for 250 bucks in a 9.2 off white to white pages, off white to white pages for 1963. No cream, not even off white pages. Guys, this is incredible. This shouldn't be happening. Yeah, um, this is honestly one of my favorite books in my collection now. If you were to tell me what I think this should be worth, this should be worth thousands of dollars. I'll tell you what guys, I'm not complaining, I'm just concerned. I'm surprised that that is even in the realm of possibility. And looking at this book, it's so sharp, it almost looks like it could get a 9.4. Yeah, this is ridiculous. It's kind of cool seeing such a high grade, it's like a total time capsule on like basically what these books look like off the shelf. It's like kind of a nice piece of history to see this sharp of the book. That is just before my dad was born. This is more mint condition than him. What do I want you to do in the comments? Write down the best deal you ever got on eBay that you even felt honestly was a bit of a steal.
I want to know. And guys, you know I'm always going to keep you updated on what's going on with the Swamp Thing collection. So let's go take a look at what I got here. Uh, this was on a bidding war on mycomicbookshop.com. And I was able to get some uh, really good Swamp Things. I put a price, I said I wasn't going to go past it, and I didn't have to. Man, this thing is packed airtight. This is how you ship comics, guys. All right, guys, number one, literally number one, we have Swamp Thing number one in a CGC 7.0. It is not the first appearance of Swamp Thing, but it is the origin retold. First appearance of Lieutenant Matt Cable, Alec and Linda Holland. This is, I believe this is the first time he's actually called appropriately Alec and not Alex. Uh, 7.0, it is white pages. I was looking for 8.0 or higher to this collection. However, I was able to get this for 200 bucks. Man, what? the $200 range is like where it's at for me right now. This is crazy. Yeah, once again, this is not a $200 book. Um, very, very happy about that. That's one of the sharpest 7.0s I've ever seen. I wonder if a press and a resend might even get a grade bump. I do see some soiling. That to me means this hasn't been cleaned. Okay, I'm definitely cracking and pressing and resubmitting, but I think I'll probably sit for a little while. Let me at least enjoy it for a bit here. 7.0, Swamp Thing, number one. Let me get that nice and close to the camera. Hopefully there's no glare. Um, that's, you know, that's been a book I've wanted graded for a long time. Number two. 9.6 of Swamp Thing number two, which is the first full appearance of Anton Arcane, first appearance of Patchwork Man. I actually thought um, that it was the first appearance of um, Abby. Um, wait, let me see here, one second. No. I thought this was going to be her first appearance, but um, I think she is in a cameo, but I could be remembering that completely wrong. Um, nine. Point six off white to white from 1973 or 1972 yeah 1972 um, yeah that's super clean uh, this is actually one of my favorite books in general this is that awesome Len Wein Bernie writes and stuff very classically horror elements inside you know it's just a masterpiece it, those guys were out of their league with what they were doing with this run 20 cent cover Gorgeous. All right, and then you know I had to flex on you to end this video, so let's do it with... We can file this under one of the next most impressive books in my collection because it is the first full appearance of Abby Arcane and first full appearance of Patchwork Man in a 9.8. That's right, guys. That's a clean, clean, clean book right there. And I did not have to break the bank. Like I said, I set what I told myself I wouldn't overpay for, and it went under. So, I didn't even have to raise my bid. If we're being honest, everything that came on this table today, except for maybe the dog treats, was under fair market value or significantly under fair market value. It's honestly hard to hone down what the fair market value of this is. However, it's probably a few thousand dollars off. My collection of Swamp Thing is almost near complete. Um, I've got a bunch of 8.5s, 9.2s, a couple 9.8s now. Um, I decided not to collect 1 through 10. I'm going to collect 1 through 13, which is the full Len Wein run. Bernie Wrightson uh, cut out at issue 10, but I'm going to collect the first 13 Len Wein issues. Very nice. Yeah, that's gorgeous. It's awesome to see a 1973 book like this get a 9.8. That's just incredible. So guys, let me know down in the comments, what price would you give something like this? I know there's going to be some sour pusses out there like, Green Lantern comics are worthless. That's probably only worth $50. Yeah, save it, dudes. This is a piece of history, and this is really cool. And frankly, to me, this is, you know, I want to talk about price, 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 but this might be priceless to me. I don't see myself ever selling that. Not to mention, Dr. Polaris is one of the cooler villains that they kind of revisited in the 90s and I thought he was really badass. I really enjoyed 
reading Dr. Polaris villain stories when I was a kid. So will I ever sell this? I think no. That is awesome. Guys, great, great books all around. Show you everything here. And as always, guys, let me get this last book. Oh, where'd I put it? Please hold. Keep on hunting.